Hello and welcome to AFTV5 Studio. My name is Kimberly Holiday. I am the radio host, brand ambassador, motivational speaker, and published author. September is Sickle Cell Awareness Month, and I have brought today Ayana Edmondson, Sickle Cell Association of Texas, the Mark Thomas Foundation. She is here with us today to share with us some very important facts that we need to know about sickle cell. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. All right, so today we're going to ask some very important questions, um, just straight to the point. So first of all, I'd like to get right in. What is sickle cell? So sickle cell is an inherited blood disorder that affects our red blood cells. So usually red blood cells are a whole, like circular. Um, but if you have a mutation that causes sickle cell, now your red blood cells are in like a crescent moon shape. Mm -hmm. And so because of that, um, it causes many complications. Um, so your red blood cells carry oxygen throughout your body. That's what its function is. And so when it's mutated like that and misshapen, it can't carry the adequate amount of oxygen throughout the body. So with that, it causes um, different um, problems like organ damage, you know, um, tissue dying, depending on where it gets stuck, because it's because of the misshapen, it can't flow as easily through our veins and vessels, especially the smaller capillaries and things like that. So it gets um, blocked, and that causes um, pain crises and um, vaso occlusion, because when it gets when the red blood cells get sticky, um, they clump together and they form blood clots. So that rises other complications like stroke, heart attack, blindness, um, and that's also where it causes the organ damage, kidney failure. All of those are the most extreme cases, and unfortunately, all of these complications also can lead to death. Um, the more still extreme, but not as extreme as the other ones I mentioned, is a pain crisis, and so. Right pain crises are like your body um, at times it can feel like glass going through your vein and every time your heart pumps it goes a little it cuts a little bit more it cuts a little bit more because it like you know your bl blood flows with you know every heartbeat kind of thing and so it can be excruciating pain because your blood cells are trying to go through the um, vessels and there's not enough room, there's not enough space um, at times. So very painful, very painful. So thank you for answering for me what is sickle cell. Not a problem. Um, I also know that you are a sickle cell warrior, survivor. I'm, I'm yes. not exactly sure which word to use, no, but no. I know that you are living with sickle cell yourself. So yes. um, many people do not live past the age of 28. Eight, I believe that is some of this. Actually 25, unfortunately. 25. Yeah. Um, they, well, let me, let me say that again. A lot, when we first started, like when I first I'm 27 now, God is good. Um, and so yes, sickle cell warrior, sickle cell survivor, all of those are great terms to use. Um, when they told my parents that I had sickle cell and going through that, trying to figure out what it is and learn more about it, um, they were like, oh, we don't know. We don't know much about this disease. We don't know if she can live past 25. And so meeting a lot of other sickle cell warriors, um, that has been their story as well, and that number resonates um, with a lot of my other sickle cell sisters and brothers. Um, but because of God's grace, and you know, technology is not where not technology, um, medicine for sickle cell disease and research is not where it's supposed to be. And I thank God for it. Um, the research in 2018 and 2017 that's really coming. So I'm very um, hopeful in the next five years to definitely be able to, you know, push forth um, in research. Um, but because, you know, the lack of research, lack of me medication and things like that, um, they weren't sure. They, you know, with all of the unknown. And so that's why they told my parents that. Um, but thank God for, you know, nat prayer. Yeah. first of all yeah. and um just taking care of yourself there's many ways you can you know stay healthy and take care of yourself but everyone's different so what may work for me may not work for others there's four types of sickle cell um there's ss hemoglobin ss hemoglobin 
SC, mm -hmm. um, beta thalassemia zero and beta thalassemia plus. And so I have SC, um, which is not as severe. I put in quotes because like I said, every individual is different. And so um, I know someone with SC that is as sick or maybe more sick than a SS, which is supposed to be the worst type of sickle cell. So um, every individual is different. It reacts different to other people to different people and so it's um, not a cookie cutter box type of um, disease. You are an excellent advocate um, for sickle cell. Um, it, has sickle cell been considered a black disease? Let's talk about that. <laughs> um, okay, so sickle cell has like other diseases or other things in the world, they, they, it has a negative stigma towards it, and um, a lot of people would like to put that label on it. Um, it is disproportionately, it disproportionately affects African Americans, but it is not, to me, it's not a black disease. It affects Indian, Asians, Mediterraneans. Um, in the foundation, we have white families, we have Hispanic families that we serve, and so it's not just, oh, you only see it only see it in African Americans, that's not the case. It is, it knows no color. It is um, widespread throughout um, the world, so. And that is why it's really important to have you here today, especially during this month, because yeah. uh, we want um, everyone to know that this doesn't just affect black people, that this Correct. is uh, a global thing. And mm -hmm. there are amazing programs like the Mark Thomas Foundation that is available yes. uh, to get information out. Um, yes. Will you tell us about some of the services and uh, support yes. that is offered by uh, the Mark Thomas Foundation? Yes, definitely. So we have a variety of services. Um, if you know anyone with sickle cell or sickle cell trait, we provide these services to you and your families as well as the caregivers. Um, so some of our services is are um, we have two camps. So we have, well, now three, we just launched a third one. So we have a summer camp for ages six to 14 years old. And that their main goal there is peer support and education. Um, I've, I didn't meet anyone my age or anyone, matter of fact, um, with sickle cell until I was a sophomore at UT. So I think I was wow. maybe 20, 21, 22. Um, and I was just like, I've never met someone with sickle cell. This is great when I found the foundation. Um, so that camp is to, like my parents were great. Parent support is awesome. You know, having a chronic illness, your parents are very supportive. Um, but it's nothing like that peer support that I can talk to you. I, I know what you're going through. You know what I'm going through. That sharing of that relationship is priceless. And so um, we definitely use that camp to build relationships and build bonds and things like that. And then, of course, we educate our kids about what they have and what it does to their body and, you know, the medications out there and things like that. Um, also, we have our um, spring break camp, which is in March. So the first one's in August, the um, second week of August. And so our March camp is our transition camp. And so what we do for that, um, we transition, we help um, start the conversation at 15. So 15 to about 20. Um, we transition, so from pediatric to adult care. When you're in pediatrics, I didn't have a <laughs> great experience transitioning, and so that's why I have a passion for this one, this camp as well. Um, when you transition from pediatric to adult care, it's like, you know, in pediatrics, they baby you, they're, they're caring, they're loving, and they're awesome, and then they throw you to the <laughs> wolves. I, that's my term in my head of my experience. Um, when I went into adult care, I didn't really know much. I knew... I didn't know much about what to expect as a whole with the um, hospital, the doctor, you know, not really expecting that experience. I knew a lot about my disease because of my mother. She was really good, but not knowing everything about what I was about to encounter. And so with that camp, 
we um, bring in an adult hematologist to speak with them to let them know like what to expect on their first visit on you know visits after that what their hospitalizations will be um, like you know similar to what that would be what that will look like um, we also make sure they know their baseline hemoglobin we educate them on their disease um, new research that is out there to you know give them hope um, we also talk about do you know how to make your own appointments? Do you know um, your insurance? Do you know how to find your insurance card? Do you own, you know, you know, ask your parents about that? And so we try to well round, um, make sure they're prepared for college and if they want to branch out and, you know, move out and, you know, when they go to college, do they know how to take care of themselves without their parents? And then we also do like resume building, a college prep, scholarship, reach, like all of that, we do it all. And then the camp we just launched, so um, 2019 will be the first time we do this camp, and it is a um, adult retreat for those who have sickle cell um, as an adult. And so we are super excited for that, and that will be a retreat for the adults to, you know, break away, to have, you know, community as well. And so we're super excited to launch that one. Some of our other services, we do case management, we do um, education, we do outreach, we do health fairs, um, we do uh, newborn screening notif notifications. So when you're born in, like, say, the Austin area, Houston area, um, Texas, we um, get the newborn screening notifications if you have the disease or the trait, and then we, you know, notify you and kind of give you the support that you need. Like, you know, when you get whenever you hear that your child has, you know, a uh, chronic illness or in, even if the trait, like, oh, what is the trait? Like, what is that? Um, so some of them are like, oh my gosh, you know. So we call them and, you know, give that support of like, this is what, you know, sickle cell trait is and things like that. Um, I, thank you for bringing up the trait. I've been sitting here listening and <laughs> um, this um, information is really also very dear to me. You and I have had some personal conversations, and I've also been very open and honest um, with the world, um, and you've seen me hashtag um, for myself sickle cell warrior. There are a lot of things about um, the sickle cell that I need to understand and learn. It was just mm -hmm. last year that I was uh, posting videos of myself in the hospital uh, receiving uh, blood transfusions mm -hmm. and iron transfusions. Um, it was always my understanding that I simply had the trait. However, some things were beginning to happen in my life mm -hmm. um, in my 40s that I didn't quite understand. And so um, I had the opportunity uh, to meet with you and some people mm -hmm. from the Mark Thomas Foundation who were really um, my first um, source as mm -hmm. an adult and actually my whole medical life, even really mm -hmm. taking the time to learn and take some interest and find out some of these things that have been affecting me. Mm -hmm. um, before we go any further, we don't want to say the word symptoms at all, but what are some of the things um, that people um, experience on a daily basis, like yourself, maybe adults okay. who haven't ever got tested before some of the new laws passed, who may have be, be um, feeling certain things, if you could just go over that. Okay, that's a great question. Um, a lot of, I know personally a story that one of my friend's mothers um, got diagnosed with sickle cell disease at the age of 45. Um, they misdiagnosed it for many years as arthritis or we just can't put our finger on it. Maybe it's lupus because um, that disease causes a lot of complications as, as well. Um, but it was a fact that, you know, things were going on. They were like, let's just wing it and let's just test you for sickle cell and she had sickle cell disease so um, because I, I don't want to get this date wrong but 1996 seven, four, one of those um, apologies for not having the exact year um, but that's when in the 90s is when um, newborn screenings for sickle cell disease so they always did no, newborn screenings but sickle cell was not always on there for screening and so if you were born before the 90s a lot of people weren't tested for the trade or for the disease so there I'm sure there are people walking around that don't know their status and so status meaning don't know the trade don't know the disease and being diagnosed like you said in your 40s you didn't know like something was going on and that is a lot of people's story like you don't know like especially like if you're pregnant or something um, stressful, like extremely stressful, your body's going through something else um, that's never experienced that before, going to a high altitude, because um, that 
hypoxia can trigger, you know, your cells to start sickling and clumping together. Mm -hmm. And so um, all of these different things. So, like, I feel like if the doctor is not understanding, like, what's going on, go for it. Test it. Um, if you are an adult, and, of course, <laughs> you're an adult, so you pass the newborn screening age, but going through... Um, for your monthly checkup, your woman check, your men check, your your yearly physical, that's what it's called. Right. You can literally say, can you test me for sickle cell? Um, that's what my boyfriend did, and he found out he does not have the trait, so that's awesome. Praise Jesus. Um, so, like, some people don't even know. They're like, oh, yeah, I'm screening for all of these, you know, things, but that's one thing you physically have to ask for in that screening. Um, so, uh, also to answer your question, if you go to a high altitude of, like, you want to go skiing or you want to, um, on an airplane and you feel a little more short of breath than usual or than your peers and your family, or you start getting a headache or, you know, these are certain things that you feel like, oh, something's not right when I go into a higher altitude. And so that is caused by... When you have sickle cell and you go to a higher altitude, that's one of our triggers. Because red blood, it, sickle cell affects red blood cells, red blood cells carry oxygen throughout your body. When you go into higher altitude, there's less oxygen for your body to process kind of thing. And so the air is thinner, you know, all of that thing. So all of those are components to trigger a crisis because you're not, one, you're already lacking oxygen because of your cells. Then you go into higher altitudes that there's not a lot of oxygen anyway, then you get, you know, certain, you feel a certain way, certain problems, certain things, you get, you feel more tired or, you know, short of breath and things like that. So those are all things to um, look out and watch out for. Thank you so very much, Ayana Edmondson. Um, yeah. As we begin to close, um, can you tell um, others how they can get in touch with you for more information, to support you, to find out about different events? Uh, mm. that Mark Thomas Foundation uh, has for us? Yes, definitely. So um, if you want to get in touch with our foundation, if you know someone with sickle cell or the trait, please do not suffer in silence. Um, we are here for you. Our website is sicklecelltx.org. So that's www.sicklecelltx.org. And then our office number, if you want to reach us, is 512 Four five eight ninety seven sixty seven in the Austin location, Austin area, but we have three locations. So if you call the headquarters in Austin and you live in Houston or San Antonio, we have offices there too. Um, you can also email us at info at sicklecelltx.org. You can definitely email us there if you have any questions or if you need any help. Um, and then, yeah, I think... I think that's great. Don't suffer in silence. We are here to help you. That's what our purpose is. That's what we are here for. So I would like to thank you on behalf of AFTV5 for coming out, um, especially uh, during this month, September um, Sickle Cell Awareness Month. Thank you for traveling all the way from Houston today <laughs> Not um, to make sure Ooh, that we get this information uh, out. Mm -hmm. uh, to everyone because this is about our people. Yeah, Again. yeah so an, an event that we have uh, coming up in the Houston area, we have October 20th. We have Walk for Sickle Cell in Houston, October 20th. Please come out. It's at McGregor Park in Houston, and we would love to see you there. Come out, show your support, get support. We're here to help. Again, thank you for being here. My name is Kimberly Holiday. We're coming to you from the AFTV5 studio. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.